Hello, I'm Fiona Simon, the CEO of the Australian Hydrogen Council. It's my pleasure to be speaking with you today. The Australian Hydrogen Council, or AHC, is the peak body for the emerging hydrogen industry in Australia. We connect industry participants with one another and with the industry's stakeholders so we can work together to build a clean and resilient energy future with hydrogen as a key part of the energy mix. We started as Hydrogen Mobility Australia, which was formed in 2017. In October last year, we changed our name to the Australian Hydrogen Council to reflect the diversity of our growing membership and the broad hydrogen agenda. We have 54 members at the moment, and I'm pleased to say we are ever growing. We even had five members join just in this last week. As you can see, our members are companies and they're spread across energy, transport, technology, consulting, finance, investment, and the chemicals industries. And this reflects the true versatility of hydrogen. Our members have come together because we share a view that the hydrogen industry shows particular promise for Australia. We have the land mass, solar penetration to create green hydrogen and clean hydrogen at scale. We have experience, particularly in oil and gas export and in renewable, renewable energy. The invest Australian investment in renewables was in the top 10 globally last year. We also have the intellectual resources and we're seeing that with a comprehensive hydrogen research program developing across the country. Australia also has strong economic growth and provides a safe and low risk environment to invest and do business. So, so the Australian Hydrogen Council's activities are spread over three main overlapping areas. First, we work in the policy space and on all of the key matters relating to our emerging hydrogen industry. You'll see here the three licenses to operate, which we use as a basic policy framework. Second, we work with the different industry parties, with governments, regulators and academics, and we also work with other industry associations, both in Australia and overseas. We have, for example, a memorandum of understanding with H2 Korea. Third, we share what we do and think with everyone we work with, and we provide events and means of connecting with one another in the hydrogen ecosystem. Returning to the title of this presentation, each of these three areas is a strategy to foster the hydrogen industry. Policy and regulation create the foundations, Working with others, that is the relationships, allow us to connect and find ways to collaborate. And the events and public advocacy, like this event, provide an important means of developing these relationships and to share thinking. So I'll spend the rest of my presentation today really on the policy and the regulatory side and the important things we need to address within that category. However, the idea of collaborating and sharing is always relevant. And I keep saying to people, uh, many of us are saying, that what we have is a jigsaw. We need to find a way to put all of those pieces together and maybe even join different jigsaws, such as between Australia and South Korea. And it's all possible, but it also involves sustained effort to share information. It's quite a, a large coordination effort across geographic system and sector boundaries. So the Australian Hydrogen Council, we have a role to play in bringing parties together, help making the connections, helping lay the foundations so the industry can start building and get to scale. So we help put the jigsaw together along with everyone else. So returning now to policy and regulation and the key elements of these, we look at this as being the three licenses to operate. So these three licenses to operate are about the foundations of the industry. They all need to be present for a sustainable hydrogen industry. They also support and interact with one another. As you can see, the licenses to operate are the economic license, where the industry needs to get to scale. And importantly, we need to move beyond demonstrations and pilots and feasibility studies. They are all welcome but, but, and they have their place, but we need to move beyond. Then there's social license, which allows for trusted customer and community relationships. It's particularly vital for regional projects. Then there's the regulatory license, where the industry needs stable, meaningful and efficient regulatory settings to set expectations and to do business.
So the overall policy picture for hydrogen in Australia starts with the Australian National Hydrogen Strategy, or the NHS, which was released in November last year. This was agreed to by our federal government and each of our eight state and territory governments. The NHS sets out 57 government agreements about what needs to occur to develop the industry. They're themed around seven areas, and this includes national coordination, developing production capacity and local demand, responsive regulation, international engagement, innovation, skills and community confidence. The agreements also consider hydrogen across all of its major applications, so export markets, transport, industrial use, gas networks and electricity systems. The government has set up a team to implement the priority actions and the team works with the jurisdictional governments as well. The current priorities for implementation are, number one, hydrogen certification. So that's where the customer of a hydrogen producer should know how the hydrogen was made and its carbon emissions. And you might know that term as a guarantee of origin as well. Then there's gas blending. So that's hydrogen blending into the natural gas networks. Uh, uh, southern states in particular uh, have, have quite a strong reliance on gas for heating and cooking. So if we're able to decarbonise then uh, by, by putting clean and green hydrogen uh, to substitute for methane, then that's a great thing to do. So that, that, but there are regulatory and technical issues with how we're able to achieve that and by when. And obviously there's also relationships with overseas trading partners and uh, that very much includes South Korea. We've also seen funding developments with our renewable energy agency, ARENA, currently working with a shortlisted group of project proponents to use $70 million Australia worth of funding. There's also concessional finance available from government, government entity called the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. And this, uh, this group has 300 million to spend in concessional finance for hydrogen. And thankfully, the Australian government also very recently announced $1.9 billion Australian as an investment package to show, and that shows significant support for hydrogen. It is uh, including a guaranteed baseline funding for ARENA, that renewable energy agency that provides funding, of $1.43 billion over 10 years. Now, this is not specifically for hydrogen, but hydrogen is very much a clear, a, a clear priority. So we, the Australian Hydrogen Council and our members, we're working with governments to get the NHS implemented. And we're also working on how to connect it with other uh, government ambitions in hydrogen. So last month, the Australian government also released its first low emissions technology statement. And this addresses the range of technologies to reduce emissions, including hydrogen. I've reflected the key highlights in this slide that comes straight from the report. An important outcome of this work for our industry for hydrogen is a target of H2 under two. And that means a production, the production of, kilo, of a kilo of clean hydrogen for less than $2 Australian. So currently the cost of hydrogen is multiples of that. So we have a way to go. However, we think we can get there. Further on policy, the Australian states and territories have also been developing their own approaches to hydrogen, with all having released or currently working on strategies or plans that demonstrate their particular priorities. So this slide shows several of these publications. If you go to our website, there are links to them all. We are also expecting to see a New South Wales hydrogen strategy out early in 2021 and a Victorian industry development plan around the same time. The states and territories also provide funding. They provide funding amounts to encourage and support hydrogen projects in their regions. We're also seeing governments pursuing the idea of hydrogen hubs, which we're defining in Australia as the, really the physical co-location of hydrogen production and use, and ideally near major ports for export. And the states of Western Australia, Queensland, South Australia and Tasmania have announced a particular keenness to house export hubs and there's been work to test the market and develop export plans. It's not limited to just those jurisdictions though. Uh, Victoria, I think New South Wales and the Northern Territory are likely to get in on that as well. So we do have several policy pieces across the nation 
And the two main objectives right now relate to export with the NHS objective for Australia to be a top three exporter by 2030 and those jurisdictional plans I mentioned just now, but also getting the prices down where we have the low emissions technology statement stretch target of H2 under two. So the way we at AHC look at that is how can we put these pieces together and then map how we get there. So we're working on that right now. We're developing a view using hydrogen volumes that consulting firm Deloitte prepared for the National Hydrogen Strategy. The Deloitte figures are not forecasts, they are scenarios. And I've shown the two most positive ones in this graph. We've been speaking with stakeholders for some months now to test views about whether we can link these Deloitte numbers and the H2 under two target to establish a plausible goal for 2030. And at this stage, there's been a basic agreement, this basic consensus that the Deloitte figures could be compatible with H2 under two by 2030, and therefore Australia being a top three exporter. I do note that the most optimistic scenario that Deloitte has put forward sees Australian production of 1.8 megatons of hydrogen by 2030, which is a significant volume. And we're currently developing views about the scale of the projects required to get there and the policy that's required to encourage and support those production objectives. Of course, when we're looking at supply and demand, at the other end of policy is the demand side. How do we drive demand? In the longer term, we can see hydrogen exported. We can see it being blended into the natural gas networks to substitute for methane. And there are important steps with hydrogen use in industrial applications and remote area power systems. We looked at the domestic outlook and considered where the early adopters could be and found that it's very much about replacing diesel and transportation then is key. And for us, it's about heavy road trucking, it's buses, the back to base segment, typically operated by public agencies. And so we can try to get policy driven procurement and light commercial vehicles, which again covers vehicle fleets and back to base fleets and can help us with the policy side with procurement. Now, this view is not new. It's entirely consistent with the broader view that's been in Australia for a while. This slide is a famous slide in Australia. It is repeatedly shown at conferences. It is from our 2018 hydrogen roadmap, which was developed by Australia's scientific agency, the CSIRO. So in terms of strategies to support the industry and particularly uptake in transport, governments can provide the right signals by setting targets, and reducing unnecessary barriers to uptake for vehicles. They can help create the demand that then draws through private investment in vehicles and infrastructure. And of course, this is not new to you. Uh, South Korea has set targets and has also prioritised transport applications. We don't have those policies in Australia yet though. Of course, the notion of standards and targets then links to regulation. So I'll move to the regulatory licence. This slide provides an overview of the complexity of regulation in hydrogen, or at least the potential complexity when you account for the versatility of hydrogen and its range of applications. For effective and meaningful hydrogen industry regulation, we need to identify, to possibly update, and to certainly connect different regulations to help regulators and industry prepare for hydrogen to be produced and used. So the Australian Hydrogen Council has just started a regulator mapping exercise. So not the regulations, not the rules themselves, but the categories of regulation and the regulators. And I'm hoping we can start to reduce some of the complexity with this regulatory outreach and connecting those relevant entities. And we're certainly keen to share information in our work with South Korea on common areas and issues. There's also a need to develop engagement approaches for communications and for information for a range of different purposes. And this goes to support the social license. It's vital that any country moving to a hydrogen economy is able to bring consumers and communities along. The AHC, Australian Hydrogen Council, we're developing an industry undertaking at the moment to guide the development of our hydrogen industry. And it's to, really the idea is to specify those principles for how we safeguard the community, how we communicate issues and how we engage with regulators. We've got a working group uh, of members and representatives from governments and from academia 
We've surveyed members and stakeholders, and we've also looked at similar undertakings from other industries, including, including mining, renewable energy and finance. We have had draft principles out for consultation with members and industry stakeholders, and we're also developing a guidance document for industry about the principles. And separately, we're planning a broader suite of fact sheets and communications materials that cover the sorts of issues that are raised in this slide. The good news is there's much we can learn from, there's much we can adopt. We don't need to start from scratch. We can look at other industries and other countries. And so the hydrogen ecosystem is not lacking in people with the experience and the appetite to do things. We're just looking at connecting those different parts. So to wrap up, we are at a defining point in history. As the world moves to decarbonise, we have a chance to boost our resilience to economic and environmental shocks using clean and green hydrogen in the energy mix. It'll take time though, and it will require coordination and collaboration is everything. So we're working hard with our members in Australia and with our partners globally. And today's session continues this important work. I've shown some links here to key Australian websites. So these are great resources we have links and further information on our website as well. I do want you to note in particular the first link to High Resource. This actually was launched just this week and it shows all of the announced and current hydrogen industry and research projects in Australia. So it's great to have everything in one place. I certainly welcome further contact with anyone at this event and I would be happy to make introductions. So please do feel free to contact me and my details are on this last slide. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you.